For many middle-class youth in Chicago, the death toll of teens killed by gun violence can seem abstract. But for Marissa Huber, the conversations about violence at Wellington Avenue United Church of Christ in Chicago became more personal when 15-year-old Hadia Pendleton was shot in the back and killed while visiting a park just after taking her final exams. We welcome Marissa along with 18-year-old Ramona Chapman Morris, who are both members of Wellington Avenue's youth group. We also welcome Allie Baker, youth and young adult pastor at Wellington Church. Thank you all for joining us and talking about this issue. And Marissa, you said you knew Hadia. So what, what was that like when you heard the news? At first when I found out, it was really, um, I was in disbelief for the most part because my best friend had told me when she was on the train and when I was told, I was only told that Hydea was in a coma. I, and I, I wasn't really sure what had happened. I was just told that she was shot and that she was in a coma and everything that had happened. But um, yeah, I was mostly in disbelief. I was like, Hydea? <laughs> of, of all people, like you didn't expect it to ever be somebody like her. What kind of um, experience with violence do you have? I mean, you live in the Lakeview neighborhood, is that right? So um, I, I previously lived in the Logan Square neighborhood, but I, I moved. So what kind of shock was this to you, that someone your age was shot and killed just visiting a park? Um, usually it doesn't affect us as much, if, unless it happens to us personally. So, you know, seeing violence every day in Chicago, it really doesn't mean as much unless you experience it, like, firsthand. And at, I'm not going to lie, like, it was kind of like that for me, too. So, like, it didn't matter as much to me until it was somebody that I really knew that was taken. So. Ramona, what was your reaction? Um, you didn't know Hadia, but uh, when you hear all these teens being shot on the news, what, what goes through your mind, people your age? Well, I know that it's kind of rough for me personally because it's not something that I have to deal with. You know, like I go to the lab school, I live in a really safe neighborhood. It's not something that I'm really confronted with every day. Um, so I guess the people, like Marissa said, aren't really real to me. I guess, and like, see, like even now at this point, you know, even after the death of Heidi and so many other teenagers, it's still, it's. I mean, it's hard for teenagers to kind of get outside of themselves in their daily situations um, enough to be able to kind of see themselves in these other people, because you know, it could be, it could be anyone. Like I drive through unpleasant neighborhoods on my way to school all the time, and I could be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it could happen to me. But it's still not real to me, but I like how now everybody's sort of rallying around it and it's becoming more of an issue and a lot of teenagers are thinking, you know, that could be anyone. It doesn't, you don't have to be in a really unsafe neighborhood living there all the time. You don't have to be a poor student. It can like, you can just be unlucky. So I, that's kind of my reaction. And mm -hmm. Allie, how did you address this issue, especially right after the news of of Hadia, and then of course there's so many other victims, and she's not the only one, but how did you address that in this youth group? At the time that this happened in January, we had been watching Batman, um, which I had chosen because it was something I knew that a lot of the teens were watching, and I personally hadn't planned on watching it because I knew there was a bunch of violence, and uh, after seeing it, I, I decided, you know, this is actually a great conversation piece uh, to help kind of talk about violence and then find ways to contextualize it and connect it to their, their real lives. And so here we were just wrapping up uh, that movie and having much as, you know, a bunch of conversations and then finding out that Marissa, Marissa's friend had been shot and killed. Um, so of course my first thought is, you know, one, why didn't I think about this before? You know, why hadn't I thought about that in the conversation on violence? We didn't talk about gun violence. Uh, in Chicago and how bad it is. We had talked a lot about bullying and domestic violence, violence against the planet, that sort of thing. Um, so one, I felt naive. Uh, and then my first thought was, how do, I, how do we care for each other in this moment? And so checking in with Marissa and, and other teens to find out, you know, what do, how do your schools respond to this? How are your friends responding? How are your parents responding? Um, and being really disappointed to hear that the schools weren't saying anything. I mean, I imagine King High School probably did, but mm -hmm. in checking in, you know, our, one of the unique things about our youth group is that we have folks, all of our uh, young people are at different schools. And so it's interesting to hear the different perspectives because different schools, different neighborhoods. Um, and so most of them said they weren't talking about it. Um, 
and that was very surprising to me. So my first thought is, you know, what, what care and community is in place for folks when this is happening? And both Marissa and Ramona, you took action and you participated in Project Orange Tree. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why you wanted to get involved in, in this anti-gun violence effort? Um, so Project Orange Tree was basically started by um, two friends of mine, Rosia Kepra and Victor Taylor, um, and they attend King College Prep. So they were um, actually really close friends with Hydea, and um, <clears throat> they started the campaign directly after it had happened. And the main reason that I wanted to get involved was because I didn't really want to, because it was Hydea and it was somebody so so close to my life because, I mean, my best friend, who, she's like my sister, um, it was a best friend of hers. And she had talked to her two days, she had seen her and talked to her two days before it had even happened. So since it was so close to me, I wanted to basically speak out against all of everything that's going on. It's just, it's, it's just not right to me that it could happen to anybody and it just needs to be prevented. So a lot of people wearing orange, like your bandanas. What other mm -hmm. things did you do? It was a whole week long effort? Um, yeah, it was mostly, yeah, it was a week-long effort, but it was mostly from Monday to Thursday. We, um, Project Orange Tree, they did a fast. Um, it was a fast for food, so you can eat at sunup and sundown, but through, throughout the day, um, all you could drink was water, and I didn't really <laughs> drink anything or eat anything for those days, but. How hard was that? It wasn't that hard. Actually, when you have something to fast for and you actually have a real purpose to fast, it does. it's not that hard at all. You, your mind kind of um, wanders and you don't really think about the food or like the temptation of food. And the color orange, can you explain that? Um, yeah, so basi basically the, um, the reason why orange was chosen was because <laughs> orange is a cautionary color, so when um, when hunters go out and, and hunt, they wear bright orange or like neon colors so they can um, be seen by other hunters so they don't get shot. And basically the reason why they chose orange was because they wanted it, it's a cautionary color, it's bright, it's, it's supposed to represent how we don't want to keep getting gunned down, like we're rampant dogs, like, you know, we're people, we deserve to live. And the tree is also supposed to represent libation. Mm -hmm. And Allie, how do you address this with the youth group? Do you, how do you offer this generation hope that one day we could see an end to this violence? Or does it feel like it's hopeless? I'm sure it does sometimes. I'm sure it does a lot of times. Um, for me, it, it continues to go back to the community of care. And, you know, do you have a community where you can go and be vulnerable and share your fears and your hurts and that story and how that fits into your life? And can you, and, and then receive support. And so one of the cool things was, you know, uh, March 17th, we had a big service where the youth preached to the congregation about growing younger. And this is when Marissa made the announcement about Project Orange Tree. And of course, I heard nothing but great things about how wonderful all the teens were. But the thing that was very exciting was how enthused the congregation was to support this effort. You know, And it, it started off with just wearing orange. And they all wanted to wear orange. And so we made the ribbons and made that available to everyone. And so now we're in the next step. And what does that look like? Um, what Marissa was saying earlier, you know, we, we talk a lot of talk, but uh, where's the walk? And exactly. so, you know, our actions need to meet our words. And so we're talking a lot about this, which is how the whole project came up, right, out of conversations. And so now I think everyone's wondering what's, what's next, what, what to do. Um, and I don't have an answer for that. I don't. I think, I think it comes out of conversation and community, and I think the young people will tell us what to do. So. And I think you guys have started on the right track and, and speaking out against gun violence and wearing the orange and remembering your friend Hadia. That's, that's where it starts, too. So thank you for sharing the story with us and, and more about your youth group and ministry. I appreciate it. I'm Anne-Marie Gerhardt for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.